Here's a fun little argument where something's clearly going wrong. Speaking of Swiss cheese, we can say, the more cheese you have, the more holes you have. The more holes you have, the less cheese you have. And so the more cheese you have, the less cheese you have. Clearly there's something going wrong here. Actually, this belongs to a family of fallacies called secundum quid. And in this video, we're going to see how they work and what's going wrong with them. Here's the offending argument. And the problem with it is this word less, because there are actually two kinds of less going on here and they're being conflated. This less in the second premise is less with respect to the block. More holes in a block means less cheese in a block. But this less down here is less cheese overall. And these two types of less are not equal. The top one is less in a certain respect, and that's called secundum quid, which is just a Latin term which means in a respect to something. And the bottom less, the blue less, is simpliciter. It's just taken in the most straightforward way. And in general, it's a fallacy to move from a secundum quid statement to a simple one, or one taken simply. And so that's what makes this a fallacy, and that's what's going on here. It's the ambiguous term less, which is being used equivocally being used in more than one sense. Now you might think, well, I would never fall for that. That seems like a fun example, but so what? Well, actually, this argument exists in less obviously wrong forms, and you can see them all over the place. I'll give a pretty neutral example where it obviously does work, and so we might be tempted to think that it's formally valid. Consider the argument, the bottom of this pineapple is rotten, and so this whole pineapple is rotten. Well, technically, if the bottom is rotten, it's just rotten secundum quid. It's just rotten in a certain respect. But then we say the whole thing is rotten. So we go from the bottom to the whole. But this kind of thinking is accurate because of background notions of things like fungal spores and so forth. So in certain cases where things like contagion are concerned or bad influences of things are concerned, secundum quid thinking actually is correct because of the background assumptions that we have or the background notions we have about the way things work. But again, it is a fallacy and there are borderline cases which look convincing but themselves are technically fallacious. And if you develop a sense for this, you'll see secundum quid fallacies all over the place. Even if it is perfectly reasonable to infer that an entire pineapple is rotten because the bottom is rotten.